you know, one of the things I've been thinking about a lot, and we talked a little bit about before we jumped on recording, is I've just been thinking about, you know, with Peak Mind, which is my company, a lot of it is around optimizing the internal space so that you can create the optimal life outside. You know, it's it's the corollary between our inner world and the outer world. And so I just thought to myself, you know, I think there's a conversation that gets to be had that I haven't heard amidst all the noise that is happening, which is really around what is the mental game in this brave new world, right? Like how do we create a sense of resilience and renewal and uh, and do so um, coming out of, of totally unknown circumstances, circumstances that many of us, at least in this generation, have not faced, right? This is an intro. Intro, intro, intro. Hustle and float shark with your boy, my boy, Matt Wolf and Joe Fit. Hey, we are back again with more yes. awesome stuff Hustle. for your ears and your brain. Your ears. Stimulate Hustle your brain. My name's Matt Wolf. I'm here with Joe Fear. Yeah, I think we stopped doing that a long time ago. I think we, we had like, an intro already. Ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Right. But we used to do that. Remember, we used to like at the very intro of the episode, we would like re-intro ourselves. Like, I'm Matt Wolf, and this is Joe Fear. Yeah, I'm over it. Uh, <laughs> they'll figure it out. Okay, I'm Joe Fear. All right, now the niceties are out of the way. Let's uh, <laughs> let's cut into the real talk. <laughs> um, this is real talk, I would say, today. Um, yeah. This episode with Mr. Michael Trainer. He's a buddy of ours. Mm-hmm. He's been on the show uh, two years and a couple months, or a few months or so. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so, I mean, we his backstory, all that stuff, we get into it a lot more in that sh- episode, I do believe. I actually don't remember, mm-hmm. but I'm sure we did. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this one, I mean, man. I mean, we're we're still in the midst of the COVID stuff at the time of recording, so um, you know, it, we're we're uh, it really goes deeper into I would say uh, the mental side of what's happening right now, and and kind of the the big perspective changes and the ways of being and ways to kind of set yourself up right mentally. More than yeah. it's not like hey, this is like one singular thing. It's like this is like the core stuff. Right yeah. Now. Well. So we, we, we talk a lot about that, but so a little bit of a background on Michael Trainer. So he, he co-founded a company called Global Citizen, mm-hmm. which puts on these giant events in uh, Central Park in New York. And he has like Jay-Z and Beyonce and um, Coldplay, so, uh, yeah. cold some of the biggest like um, artists in the world come out and, and um, participate in these events, which I believe are typically for charity, right? It's a nonprofit organization that he created. Mm-hmm. And he also has a podcast called Peak Mind. And on this podcast, I know he's had like Laird Hamilton and he's had Terry Crews and he's had uh, Moby and mm-hmm. he's had um, he's had some like really, really, really big name guests, really big name doctors, really big, na- like just some amazing big names. So the first time we brought him on the show, we wanted to sort of pick his brain a little bit about how did you manage to get connected with all of these people, mm. right? Um, now he's actually writing a book about how he managed to get connected with all of these people. So when the, when this episode first starts, when we jump into it, we're going to dive into that a little bit. And he's going to talk about some of the, the, the big lessons that are going to come out in his book about how to sort of network and connect with anybody. And that's a really fascinating topic in its own. And then it sort of shifts into this discussion about the, the world and mindset and, um, you know, how, how we should be approaching thinking about all the COVID stuff that's going on and. Um, it, it gets into a really sort of deep philosophical conversation beyond that. Yeah, no, it's a lot of uh, just the mental state that we're all in right now. We're collectively in this weird, interesting times that times are changing fast and it's rapidly changing. And not a lot of folks, you know, we're not equipped to this. Like no one's been mm-hmm. through this kind of thing. So uh, the cool thing with Michael is like on his podcast, Peak Mind, he he. Li- crazy rolodex i mean like he literally i think his first episode was with the dalai lama i mean yeah wow <laughs> <laughs> um yeah wow i'm that's all i want to say so like that's the caliber of brain like mind share that he's bringing together and uh just think about what and, and he's distilling the best of the best so and you got to think like as a podcaster which is so cool is that we're sponges like we are mm-hmm. the ones the hosts are the ones that are initially I mean, really, probably the most attentive to the conversation because we have to be in it. Like we are in it. We're choosing to be in it, and it, mm-hmm. it's what we choose. And and then we respond. It's not a one way thing. It's a dialogue. So, and the fact that you know Michael's been on the show now twice, but this one specifically, uh, it's just really interesting to 
open up the sponge or squeeze the sponge a little bit. I don't know. Squeeze the sponge a little bit. <laughs> I'm just trying to play with the analogy, but you know, like we're you got to think of like the collective thoughts and 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 like wisdom that he has brought into himself and distilled, and that's what we get into in this episode. Is like okay. So you've you've talked with the brightest minds and in from to- yeah. so many different perspectives. Like, give us the rocks. Like, give us the the principles that everyone yeah, should the, really live by. The way he thinks is a product of all of these great minds that he's managed to be That's connected it. with. Yeah, Peak yeah. Minds. So <laughs> amazing, amazing conversation. You're cool. gonna enjoy it. We enjoyed it. Um, we did take notes on it. Mm. We take notes on all of our episodes, and we'd love it if you would go and grab those notes. They are free for a couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So hustleandflowchart.com slash comp. Hustleandflowchart.com slash comp. So get them quick. They go away within two weeks of this episode dropping. Uh, and then they get locked up in our membership vault thingy. But uh, <laughs> yeah, go to hustleandflowchart.com slash comp, and uh, you're going to get, you know, this is a, there's a lot of philosophical talk, but what's really cool is um, there's so many references and resources and things and principles that Michael's talked about. So uh, it's almost like it could distill a philosophical talk into a very actionable guide. And actually, mm-hmm. we told him about like our process after the fact. He was like, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, like, so like, yeah. Um, and he actually said he wants a copy when it's free. He's like, this is good stuff. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so uh, go get him. Hustleandflowchart.com slash comp. And, yeah, or text the number 38470 and send us the word comp in your text message and we'll get into you that way as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, as a double CTA, another CTA is coming after this, but the flowchartgroup.com, it's free. This is where you want to go chat with us. Too many CTAs. Nah, it's fine. <laughs> Keep track of them. Uh, hustle flow, I mean, flowchartgroup.com. Just join the group. It's a Facebook group, totally free. You can interact with us, the guests, um, and then also everyone else listening on the show. So, Actually, if we're talking about that, I, I might as well mention. So in this episode, we do talk about breathing a little bit. He mm. mentioned like Wim Hof breathing techniques. Um, as of this recording, one of the recent trainings we put inside of the Hustle and Flowchart group is an exercise that follows the Wim Hof breathing method. True. So that's a freely available inside of the Hustle and Flowchart group right now. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. Oh, Freezel, flowchartgroup.com, and our last CTA. Not too many mm-hmm. CTAs, but a lot of them. Uh, we're breaking all the rules, I know. Uh, is mm-hmm. Ahrefs. Is they are our sponsor. We have used them for many a years, and we've talked about them quite a bit. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm just going to say this is a great tool for for anyone that, that, that I mean, the the elite of traffic and SEO and paid and all that stuff, you can definitely benefit. You probably heard of it. If you haven't, you know, like actually taken the leap, it's not much of a leap. It's $7 for seven days of to try Ahrefs out. So, you know, if you're one of those elite traffic people, uh, stop waiting because you're yeah. hurting your business. And you're probably- I don't know <laughs> if we've ever had a traffic person come on our podcast and not mention Ahrefs. That's like, true. That's how prolific it is among the people who know what they're doing when it comes to driving traffic. Yeah. And then on the, uh, and I'm going to say this with all the love, the dumb, dumb side. So that's my side. Uh, Definitely Joe's side. <laughs> <I'm not kidding. laughs> are, the, are the folks that don't nerd out crazy on like all these little detail keywords and all these things and uh, like a little bit more broad strokes maybe the ones that are looking for trends the ones that just like okay i want to get the power of of harnessing traffic and knowing where to point my energy in terms of content development and yada yada, you know youtube stuff as well and maybe some ad stuff uh it's great for that there's a lot of training and there's a lot of ways to use hrefs and it's all like the training's free. There's a blog of like tons of video training. Like it's like hours and hours and hours. So yeah. Um, don't feel like Go there's any it. barriers here. So Ahrefs, A H R E F S dot com. They have a seven day trial for seven bucks. So go get it. You really don't have much to lose other than seven bucks. So go do it. And you won't lose the seven bucks. I guarantee that. No, you'll make more than seven bucks back off it. All right. A H R E F S dot com. Let's go talk to Michael Trainer. All right. Michael, how you doing, my man? I'm great. Good to see you gentlemen again. Yeah, it's yeah. what round two on the Hustle Flow Chart podcast. So it's been what a couple of years, I think. Yeah, it's been a couple of years since our last conversation, which was epic. I That's remember, right. I remember very well our conversation as well as uh, where I was when we had it. So lots of things <laughs> have changed in all of our worlds uh, yeah, since no then. Kidding. So uh, yeah, it's great to be back on with you guys. It is January thirty first, twenty eighteen was the last one. Oh, there you yeah. go. Look yeah, at you, yeah, so. two years, over two years. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy, man. <laughs> so, yeah, since then, I mean, uh, well, now you have a podcast. I think you were talking about it at the time uh, called yeah. Peak Mind. 
Uh, yep, I launched it. I launched it. Um, it's been about not quite a year and a half, but uh, but yeah, I had been recording previously for several years. Um, I wasn't quite ready to commit to, as you guys well know, the the journey which I now love, but mm-hmm. the journey of consistently putting out you know a couple episodes a week and wanting that to be obviously high quality, high quality guests, but. Um, you know, I I had this you know experience where I literally I went to a Fleetwood Mac show and they did a tribute to Tom Petty and I'd always wanted to go see Tom Petty and I realized you know what uh, some things you you only get one shot at and if you miss them they don't come back and I realized I I still had my song in me and and part of that was the podcast and so I committed right then that I was going to put it out in the world and it's been a, a great gift to me and yeah. it's been amazing to see as as you guys well know the community that. Uh, that comes around you as a result of the trust that I think is built through a long-term audio, long-form audio experience, yeah. and you know, being able to just be really vulnerable and and uh, and share you know the greatest insights from the greatest people in your network, and it's been a true gift to my life, and it's exponentially increased the quality of of my relationship with my community. So it's been mm-hmm. a it's been peak mind has been. Uh, it's been one of the greatest things I've done since we last spoke. Yeah, no, I know. I've see, I get the emails. I think it's weekly. You know, it's a weekly episode you drop out there, yeah. and uh, it's. I mean, the the people that you bring in. I know Moby has been on there. You, your network is amazing, and and you know it has been for a very long time because you've been doing big things. You know, Global Citizen. Uh, you mm-hmm. co-founded that, and I know that's a big event that. Um, well, I know typically it's in person in Central Park <laughs> doing big uh, concerts, people like Jay-Z and Beyonce and all yep. that stuff. But um, I just like the fact that you're now packaging up all of these thought leaders together and they might not be the leaders that, uh, you know, like someone that you might not have met or maybe it is someone and you're bringing them and kind of just essentially figuring out their minds, you know, see how they operate and then sharing that with the world. I think that is the best part of podcasting. I'm happy you're doing it specifically with the mm-hmm. Rolodex that you have. Thank you. You know, yeah, it's been uh, it's been an honor for me too. I mean, as you guys know, because you've been in the game longer than I have, it's 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 a wild process, right? Because on the mm-hmm. one hand, at least for me, there's no better feeling than right now, right? Where mm-hmm. you're like connecting with someone. We're, we're living in an era where getting an hour of someone's undivided attention is such a commodity, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. someone not checking their phone, not being distracted by email, not being distracted by other things. And to do, be able to do that, I mean, uh, sometimes I pinch myself because I'm like, all right, well, you know, like the other day, it's like I remember. So one of my favorite books is The Obstacle is the Way. And, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. earlier this year, Ryan Holiday literally like drove across town to come to my living room to record an episode on his new book. Nice. And he then hit like, you know, I'm not saying it was because of my podcast, but he hit <laughs> New York Times bestseller number one or whatever that week. And I was like. What what world am I living in where like my hero, <laughs> right? like someone who like I respect so much is, is not only am I like I would like pay to go see them like in a talk like with fifth you know, 5,000 people, but let alone like they're actually investing their time and energy to come talk to me in my living room like this. I can't believe I didn't figure this out earlier. Like this is, <laughs> this is, this is amazing. It really yeah, is. It's like podcasting is a secret back door. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. A friend of mine wrote a book, uh, Alex Benayan. I don't know if you guys oh, yeah, are yeah. familiar with him. Yeah. He mm-hmm, wrote mm-hmm. Uh, the third door and mm-hmm. it's exactly that concept, right? Like there's the first door, the second door, and the third door is like the whole, like the door no one even thinks about, right? right. But, but gives yeah. you access to that those uh those kind of like um unknown rooms and so actually that's the book i'm also working on now not a third door but uh-huh. that that that's the question i get asked the most including on the last show which is like mm-hmm. how do you get access to some of these extraordinary people and i hadn't really thought about it that much and then i got asked the question enough that i was like you know what let me extrapolate this <laughs> in a way that hopefully people could utilize that to get into their own coveted room for whomever they it is they want to speak with you know like mm-hmm. who who are who are your heroes and like how could you find a way to connect with them in an authentic way, you know, because I think that to me, relationships are the great gold of this life. You know, I think, Mm. you know, oftentimes what's exalted on social media is the Lamborghini. 
<laughs> and don't get me wrong, you know, if someone wanted to offer me a ride in their Lamborghini, uh, I would take it. Sure. But <laughs> but uh, but I would take it probably more because I wanted to connect with the person driving the car and learn from them more so than I, you know, I highly covet having, you know, the Lamborghini in my driveway. And and that's just my personal preference. That's not to say it's wrong for anyone to covet whatever they covet uh, in that regard. But for me, it's like the relationships are the true gold. And yeah, uh, I think podcasting is one of the great platforms and one of the great ways in which you can actually ap uh, approach relationship building in this day and age. Yeah. yeah. Since, since you started this, the process of, you know, ideating and writing this book, have you come to, to, to some conclusions on like, these are some key elements that I've, I've, I've realized now that have helped me create this network? Like, because, you know, last time we talked, we, we did talk about the, the how you built the network stuff, but you know, that was a couple of years ago and you're in the process of writing a book about it. So I'm, I'm yeah. sure you've had a lot more time to actually like, think about like these are the things that I'm realizing yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a great question. So some of which I actually detailed, uh, not to be self-serving, but I, I detailed in great detail on my podcast, sort of, mm -hmm. sort of like the five five techniques you can utilize. And it really underlies a lot of the theory in, in greater detail. And some of mm -hmm. which, obviously, I'm going to keep on the download until the book launches. Yeah. Love to share it then. Uh, maybe maybe get reinvited back in a year or so uh, when that when that launches. But, but yeah, I mean, t in the benefit of your audience right now, I mean... So one of the things I actually do talk about is platform, platform, and basically being, if you will, if you will, like uh, what I call a signal in the noise, right? So there's oftentimes noise, I think, in all of our lives, right? Mm -hmm. um, email, for example, all of us get deluged by email, and the emotional state we're in when we open an email generally is, I would call it neutral to negative. Occasionally, you get a great mm -hmm. email, but largely you're kind of like. Mm, it's not you're reluctant you like, to, yeah, yeah you're not like elated to be in there so one right. of the things i talk about is like hey not going where people aren't you know and finding ways to connect with them in a way that generates emotional resonance outside of the noise you know mm -hmm. so a very simple tactical thing is like i love going old school you know like i i have a gratitude practice in the morning and i love to write a thank you note you know like you know, mm. right now, most people, when they open the physical mail, it's mostly bills. But like mm -hmm. when people get an actual note, even of a simple thing like a thank you note, it makes such an impression. And you're, it's so not crowded compared to an email, you know, mm. or mm -hmm. send them uh, an LCD note or something where it's like they've never experienced that before, you know, or yeah. even like a voice note with the phone or a, 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 a visual uh, call, like a, a birthday message using video as opposed to a text message so just thinking about things where it's like okay how can i kind of stand out and be signal in the noise and i think that that principle obviously I extrapolate in a variety of different ways but i think if you have a really resonance uh podcast as well what's interesting is that signal then attracts people to you right so mm -hmm. very clear case in example is i remember about a year ago i was listening to a podcast with Melissa Ambrosini, uh, an Australian podcaster, where she had a doctor on, Dr. Stephen Cabral. This was very specific, but they were talking about alcohol and how alcohol affects certain genetic profiles differently. Yep. And lo and behold, and you know, I no, nothing. I was nothing. No hard rules were set, but I decided to take six months off drinking. So I haven't had a drink in over six months now, and I feel amazing. In part, I got that knowledge from that podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying I'll never drink again. You know, I didn't have a problem with drinking, but I I just was like, you know what? I think the cost benefit analysis. I I'm a, a, I want to create some big things, and that's costing me more than it's serving me. And interestingly enough, come full circle because of the podcast, I literally just got someone as you happens so often you know you people knock on your door to be on the podcast yep. but some agency was like hey would you like to have dr cabral on your podcast and i was <laughs> like i was like well yes i would right so <laughs> that, that's interesting right because prior to having a podcast i would probably have to find the gatekeeper to reach out to him to Definitely. to 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 get into his ear and then it's like what i always say is don't ask to pick people's brain like don't be that when you're asking for things like obviously you want to be a give and that's the beauty of the podcast right like i'm a give to him right so mm -hmm. what a what better way to start a relationship with someone where they reached out to me i can be of service to them and then that's the tenet upon which we're beginning our relationship as opposed to traditional quote-unquote networking where it's like
like, let me reach out to you with the perception of extracting value by asking for some of your time in some obtuse, obscure way that you don't actually know what I want and and probably uh, won't feel the better from having that conversation. Or maybe you will, but it's definitely going to evoke questions in your mind of like, who is this guy? Is it worth my time? And why would I connect with you, especially if you're a busy person, which most people are in this day and age. So um Anyway, I'll pause there, but that's kind of uh, sort of some of the tactical ways I look at at relationships and really being a giver and trying to find ways to create uh, a signal amidst uh, noise. We, and I think we're living in an extraordinarily noisy time. Oh, man. Yeah, and it's even getting noisier now in this lockdown that a lot of us are still in at the time of this recording. <laughs> yes. And yeah, the noise is getting louder and louder and louder, but I think the connection a lot of times is not going deeper. You know, mm. there's... There's a lot of noise there, and I know that's something that you've been thinking a lot of as well with almost like the the mental state of what people are seeing every day. Obviously, there's the news. I heard some stat that like 85% of the folks are glued to some kind of big TV news channel, whatever that yes. might be, but that's a lot of marketing. There's not a lot of news news like, <laughs> you know, like rock bottom, this is actually the facts kind of stuff, so... Um, maybe speaking of that, some perspectives that you've had over the last just few months, even. Yeah. So as we're recording this, you know, we're amidst this uh, COVID pandemic. So all of us are in this kind of collective uh, trauma. Some, some for whom this is actually acutely traumatic. You know, mm -hmm. I was just on a call with an agency where they were talking about a, a young girl in Nepal who's literally like can't leave her home. There's theft, there's abuse. I mean, that people are mm -hmm. really, you know, there's higher incidence right now of domestic abuse. Alcohol consumption is up uh, uh, profoundly, I think, across the board. People are struggling, you know. I think, you know, a sense of purpose, right? In the U.S. where we're recording currently, you know, there's over 30 million new cases of uh, unemployment. Mm -hmm. And when you, your livelihood and your sense of purpose is attached to uh, your work, Obviously, that evokes more than just the the, the questions of uh, you know logistical questions, but it evokes really deep uh, existential questions. And in the sort of Maslow hierarchy of needs, you know, you move from the, the sort of if you're if you're in a good way, the tip of the pyramid around you know what's the purpose of my life it, back into like the base of the pyramid, which is really around how do I how do I actually survive? Mm -hmm. And if you have kids, which you know many of your listeners do, you know from what I've heard uh, from from my friends who are parents, you know, it brings a whole nother level of stress. You're thinking about how do I provide for my kids? Plus you're trying to homeschool them at home whilst trying to navigate all these different stre stressors. And so, you know, one of the things I've been thinking about a lot, and we talked a little bit about before we jumped on recording is I've just been thinking about, you know, with Peak Mind, which is my company, a lot of it is around optimizing the internal space so that you can create the optimal life outside. You know, it's, it's the corollary between our inner world and the outer world. And so I just thought to myself, you know, I think there's a conversation that gets to be had that I haven't heard amidst all the noise that is happening, which is really around what, what is the mental game in this brave new world, right? Like, how do we create a sense of resilience and renewal and uh, and do so um, coming out of of totally unknown circumstances, circumstances that many of us, at least in this generation, have not faced, right? right? And, you know, I think there's lessons that can be take from, taken from other large scale, you know, pandemics uh, and, you know, people coming out of wars. And not to say that this is the same sort mm -hmm. of scale or acute trauma, but, you know, there are ways in which, you know, the statistic you just heard, more people have died now for, uh, in the U.S. from COVID than during the Vietnam War. So there are mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, families who are witnessing loved ones and not being able to be with them in their final moments of life. I, and I just unfortunately shepherded the, the man I love most on the planet. I, I was grateful that I was able to do so at home with him. Mm -hmm. uh, my father, who I, I you, you guys know very well, has been a huge impetus for me and how I live. Sure. Yep. And he he just recently uh, departed this life about a month ago. But I was I was fortunate uh, that I was able to be with him. But you know, I mean, I, I I wouldn't have flown otherwise. But you know, flying on a plane with a mask and goggles and gloves, worrying yeah. about my my elders, I was fortunate in that I I had taken care of myself. I had been in quarantine, but I my heart goes out to those who are dealing with similar circumstances, but they can't even touch or hold the hand of of their dear loved one. You know, and so I think there's a lot of ramifications to 
this current kind of collective st- state we're living in that, that we haven't even scratched the surface of. So for me, I don't, I, I, I don't purport to have the answers. I just, ha- I feel that I've been fortunate to connect with a lot of folks that I think do have, um, uh, compasses, if you will, that are helpful mm. in navigating uncertain waters, um, you know, from like the Wim Hofs and, and the power mm-hmm. of breath work, uh, yep. you know, to the Laird Hamiltons who's confronted fear in big wave surfing to the doctors, you know, like the Dr. Mark Hyman's and, and Dr. G's who are really great. And then the performers and the spiritual teachers like the Dalai Lama and, sure. and, and folks like that, that I feel like if I, if I, one of the things I want to do is to be able to point people to the right resources, those compasses, so to speak, where they can navigate through these uncertain waters in in a good way. So as I mentioned to you before, obviously my background is in in creating sort of large scale events um, Mm -hmm. such as Global Citizen and have done a few, a couple of large scale events with Peak Mind. Uh, and I've just been thinking about and exploring and will likely launch, uh, you know, sort of a, di- a, f- a free digital event with the spirit of being of service uh, to to anyone that needs these resources and, and just have them sort of parked on peak mind. But basically reach out to a lot of these compass bearers and ask, hey, yeah. think people. Think, things are getting challenging for a lot of folks, mm. and uh, I think that's a it's a mental game a lot of us are not used to. And how do you approach it? What are the tools that are most helpful? And how can we empower people with tools in their toolbox that they can use to navigate these uncertain times and and to find their way back to center? You know, because no matter who you are, uh, you know, every one of us, I think, has been thrown off center. And so Hmm. I think there's a real need now for us to, to, to reset our mental game, to sort of prep mindset, talk to people who have been through profound adversity and really tap back into that sense of resilience and how we can be resilient in our lives and use this, this, you know, obstacle as an opportunity, you know, to bring mm. sort of the Ryan Holiday back in yeah, to, to, to turn to turn the crap into compost for, for new gardens, you know? Ooh. So, so that's, uh, that's, that's the vision. That's a damn good vision. I love that vision. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, thank I mean, cause you. that's the truth. No one knows the way, but the way is whatever path you have, um, you know, and a lot, there's a lot of reinvention happening right now. And not only to businesses, you know, to the business owners listening, but just personal lives. I mean, mm-hmm. everybody is under this insane pressure now with uh, with the lockdown and, you know, with all the other factors that you mentioned as well. So uh, it's tough to find that compass sometimes. And I think that's going back to podcasts. That's the beauty of having a podcast as well. Yeah. You know, attaching to someone who who does have a network or is kind of sifted and sorted for you. And ideally it's someone you're following that has actually done the work and they're not just saying yes to everyone, <laughs> which yeah. I know you, you do not say yes to everyone. Um, so you bring out the best in people, but it's also the best in your network. Yes. And, uh, I think it's just uh, the most powerful thing that people could be attaching to in this time right now and not glued to some screen. That's just, you know, oh, death toll, new infections or what's happening with the, you know, the job unemployment. It's like, yeah. Ooh, there's some effects that are happening that are going to last. And unfortunately, not a lot of folks will find a compass, you know, and I think that's what's really scary. I mean, however, this is going to unfold for a lot of folks. Um, well, that you, you hit it on the head there. I mean, you know, this is this is a sort of an extreme example, but, you know, we're, we're kind of also conditioning ourselves in new and dangerous ways, not not mm-hmm. just through the consumption of media, but also in the fact that we're now being we're seeing strangers strangers as potential threats right like we're uh which i think is appropriate from an epidemiological perspective to maintain social distance take all the requisite precautions Mm -hmm. but what are the long-term consequences of being apart and socially Mm -hmm. distant and maintaining that distance and not only that but like you know what to see everyone as a potential threat right like someone coughs in front of you like people get nervous you know what mm. i mean like oh yeah you know yeah. it's like it's like uh. people see you as potentially like like an existential threat and i think you know extreme example but like that's kind of what i think you know racism is it's like this artificial construct mm. where it's like you've just been conditioned into a reality which is totally not real but then that's taking hold of their brain and now we're in an era where People are being uh, socialized to be scared of each other, that seeing right. someone is an existential threat and we're all walking around wearing ma- masks, you know, and mm. uh, so much of communication is nonverbal. So it's like, in, you know, people are kind of like 
trying to teeter and navigate around you. And so instead mm. of a, a handshake and a warm hug, people are greeted with like sort of a wariness. And mm. mm-hmm. what that what that ultimately will mean for us collectively, if that becomes a default way of interacting, we have no idea. But it's it definitely doesn't bode well for, you know, our individual and collective mindsets. So yeah. I think I just think that there's a new toolbox that we're gonna have to bring to bear to help bring us back to uh, a place of, of, of healthy mindsets and, and getting really in a, in a good way to navigate through these uncharted waters, right? And so that's, that's yeah. the vision I have is like, let's bring some, some people that have great compasses that have navigated through this, you know, been through adversity, you know, and, and what, you know, what does this look like financially? What does this look like um, from parenting point of view? What does this look like uh, in terms of like how we market and build our businesses? What does it look like in terms of relating to our friends and community? How do we w- look out for those who are most vulnerable? You know, like mm-hmm. the incidence of loneliness right now and suicide and and how do like there's whole ancillary risk beyond the virus itself that's being uh, propagated. So how do we make people feel seen and heard and connected and take care obviously of their survival needs, their basic needs, m- making sure they have food and shelter, but also helping them with the psychological aspects yeah. of life um i think that's the piece that that i'm really intrigued by at the moment and and where i want to use peak mind uh as a resource to to empower people with some of those you know tools to navigate through these times yeah matt were you gonna say something there yeah i was i was just gonna comment it's very it's very interesting from like a a, a parent's perspective perspective right i've got two mm-hmm. kids i've got a seven and a five-year-old right now my five-year-old, this was his first year in elementary school. So his first experience with going to like public school is he went for two months and then all of a sudden school shut down and now he's working from a computer in the mornings, Mm -hmm. you know, like that's his, that's his experience with school. And we're getting all of these like notifications and emails now saying like when school comes back, they might go to like classrooms of only like 10 or 12 kids and like school might only be like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And like the kids will go on alternating days so that the teachers can work with one set of kids on these days. And, and like, it, it's really, really interesting because nobody knows how this is all going to play out. Like, is this going to affect the socialization of my kids? Are my kids going to, you know, like the, the the kids that are in high school right now, we were talking about it with one of our last guests, the kids that are the, like the seniors in high school aren't getting the experience of their senior prom. How is that going to like affect things down the line? It's like, it's, it's such like uncharted territory that that's what I think freaks me out and probably most people out the most is nobody knows what happens next. Right. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, uh, John Krasansky just did the Good News Network, and he did a gra- virtual graduation. I don't know if you guys saw that. No, but so I heard cool. about it. Yeah. That, that's actually <laughs> what I love seeing is I love seeing positive kind of um, approaches. Yeah, he basically, you know, he had like, he'll have graduates on, and then for one, he had like John Stewart come on and give life advice. <laughs> Another, o- Oprah came on and gave life advice. Steven Stiel- Spielberg. But it was all these great high school kids, and it was like just... That spirit of trying to provide some good news and connect, you know, a lot of kids are, that's a rite of passage, right? Like our modern day and our culture, there's so few instances where we actually mark, which is such a human need and human trait where, you know, traditionally and culturally we've had rites of passage to demarcate our moving from one phase of life into the next, you know, from Mm -hmm. boyhood to manhood or girlhood Mm -hmm. to womanhood. And graduation is, is one of those rites of passage and, you know, who we don't know the consequence that has when you're not acknowledged. I mean, a lot of times that ceremony is when someone's actually acknowledged for all the hard work that you put in over mm-hmm. four years. You know, I mean, it's like, wow. And to like put all that hard work in and then kind of feel like it kind of just flew in the wind and, you know, birthdays and all these different kind of important times where humans need to be acknowledged. You know, they need to feel mm-hmm. connected. They need to feel like they're part of something. Uh, bigger than themselves and that they're seen and they're heard and they're loved and yeah yeah, i think not having these important social rights you know is going to have its consequence we we don't know yet what what that consequence will be but i think we got to figure out some new 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 ways of acknowledging people and finding you know ways to make people feel seen and heard such that it 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 mitigates against some of the deleterious effects right yeah, I think that's that's so true. So I'm curious of like all these interviews you've done, even prior to the COVID stuff. But uh, what are some healthy mindsets? I know you 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 uh, you mentioned that I think briefly, but 
how do you train yourself to kind of keep yourself on an even even keel uh you know point yourself in the right direction with your compass that you've kind of collectively brought together so what are some principles that you live by that we can pass on and maybe there's someone else's that you've adopted or yeah something like that well i'm always in the listening and i'm always trying to you know add new tools into my toolbox but i would say some that i've put into my own life it's been in part about eliminating the things that don't serve me and in part about adding in things that do so you know i think stopping the alcohol especially during this mm. time when things have been so uncertain and it's so acutely challenging both for the collective and for me personally right like mm -hmm. going through my father's passing and then whilst also in pandemic and this collective suffering, not to be at the emotional effect, which I think often happened um, as a result of of drinking, where you know you just have this more of an emotional roller coaster. Mm -hmm. That's definitely served me. Um, I think that uh, I have a morning practice where I go out and I try to get some sunlight in my eyes to sort of start setting this circadian rhythm. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes I'll do my ten minute meditation. I used to do it inside. I'm making a very concerted effort now. If you are able to go outside, even if it's opening the window or being in front of the window, uh, you know, taking the screen off and like sticking your head out if you have to to just get that sunlight, that vitamin D, set your yep. circadian rhythms. Mm -hmm. Doing those, uh, doing you know, some deep breath work. Uh, the good news is, I think right now a lot of people are offering free classes, so you can find yoga classes for free. Uh, you know, Moto Yoga is offering some that that I've tried. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, breath work you can get for free. Um, mm -hmm. There's a company called My Intent, which is offering a, a bunch of free classes. Nice. Um, so I think there's uh, so breath work. Uh, I do journaling, so I'm taking time to actually reflect and process some of the things that are coming up for me. I think not to romanticize this time, but I do think there are some gifts, you know, in terms of mm. the the greater existential quandary of being alone and being able to pause and be like okay and again not to trivialize anyone's suffering it's just to say if you do have the opportunity to get some quiet time within i do think that this is a time where it is kind of a collective rite of passage you know oh, like yeah. there were a, there are a lot of challenges going on on the planet for the planet uh you know omit for all of us at this time and i think in some ways it's kind of a my personal belief is that there's a greater sort of um existential question being asked of all of us of like how do we rise up individually and collectively to meet that challenge mm -hmm. um so for me journaling and, and being in contemplation reading in the nighttime i'm i'm very fortunate in that i have a uh sauna that uh, i use uh, w which has become part of my evening routine you know i'm taking i'm turning the lights off i'm using my blue light blocking glasses yep. i'm sort of setting my circadian rhythm to prepare for sleep sauna and then i do a cold shower uh, right. which ev everyone has access to so uh, you know some of the things i learned from wim hof and a variety of these different practices of, of boosting immunity and decreasing inflammation i'm trying to eat as much whole foods you know here's a personal meal i just cooked but it's, it's all, all the different colors of the rainbow <laughs> you know pasture raised eggs kale you know uh you know purple potatoes garlic uh onions which are anti you know viral uh yep. you know not, not saying that that's in itself a cure for anything but just you know looking at natural ways to boost immunity boost my the the inputs the fuel that i'm putting into my body you know um mm. especially now when it's like and look, look, let's keep it real. I emotionally eat just like anyone does, you know. <laughs> you're not superhuman. I, I, I mean, like, I, watched, you're not I, I, I watched Tiger King and ate some chips, you know what I mean? Like, you Good know, like it, it's uh, so it's not to say I'm perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but those are the things I find really help me. You know, I, I can't. I can't really go to the gym, so I've been. I, I don't really care for running, but I've been jogging because I live, you know, close to the beach. So, and it's wide enough to where I can maintain social distance. So, I'm just finding practices that help keep me in a good way, you know, in, yeah. in, a, in a healthy mental frame of mind. So, so those are some of the ones that I've in, implemented. There's obviously lots more I could talk about, but those are kind of the core. That's good. Yeah, and and it, it's like what you mentioned about journaling and in not romanticizing this time, but definitely reflecting and seeing what comes up. I mean, uh, you know, late last year, I lost my dad to suicide and that was not pretty at all, but I had some of my biggest breakthroughs and that was a time of personal mourning, of course, and it was a very traumatic one, but it brought in so many answers for myself. And, you know, all of us have that opportunity in an interesting way to do that now, because this is a time that we didn't see coming. Uh, it's 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 a time for opportunity uh, in so many new ways, fresh ways. 
uh, you know, a molding of something that you've maybe done in the past or you've neglected or just what weren't aware of. Because the journaling practice, yeah, I've been going strong for a long time now. And it's like probably the most therapeutic thing, but also just mind opening, grounding thing, you know, practice in my, I do it in the evening where, I don't know, it's my mind goes wild. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's these weird, unexpected, tragic times that some of the best ideas and self-improvement can can be fostered. Totally agree. Yeah. And my, my condolences on the loss of your dad, having just gone Same. through that myself, man. It's, yeah. uh, it's a real, it's a, uh, yeah, I, I won't even do justice to the words, but I do think there's, you know, um, it's interesting just because I happen to have this in my hand as we're talking, but um, this memento mori, which is hmm. the stoic creed. I don't know if you're familiar with it. But, not that uh, one. No. This was given to me, at, <laughs> not trying to be a promo for Ryan Holiday, but he gave <laughs> me this actually, and this was prior to my father's passing. Uh, but it's a uh, it's a coin and it's a stoic philosophy which is use death as an impetus for living and this oh. is my, my interpretation but uh, but yeah but basically in in the old days of the stoics even like after a great victory um, like uh, an emperor r running through the parades, right? We talk about the uh, the opposite of our social distancing. Mm. To be to be heralded with accolades would have someone behind them yelling "Memento mori, Memento mori." So, like even in the moments of your greatest success, you're thinking about the fact that actually this is all impermanent. That death that the death greets all of us at some point. And I think, without being morose, one of the things that I think we're being collectively confronted with and, and 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 in our cases individually confronted with is this this mortality you know mm. is actually the fact that death no one escapes death right mm -mm. and we don't culturally like to think about it or talk about it. i don't like to think about it sure. I, uh, you know mm -hmm. i'd say it's uh, you know Not you fun. know aging yeah. aging uh and death are things that i think culturally at least at least in the states or something that really is swept under the rug. And so I've kind of forced myself to confront it. One, I had to. Uh, mm. I didn't have an option. Right. Uh, but also I started, it was like, you know, like I reached out. There's a guy. I did a podcast. Highly recommend uh, this guy, BJ Miller, who's a palliative care doctor. He actually yeah, had him. his own near-death experience. He lost three of his limbs. But he's shepherd. He's, he's brought over, I think, now a 1,000 people. I first learned about him on Tim Ferriss' podcast. But yep. he, he's got a great TED Talk. Uh, and he's helped over a thousand people die well. And oh, a conversation I, episode, I had with him, it wound up being a conversation I had just before I went to see my dad. And wow. I, the timing, I, it's hard to even describe. Like it, you start to feel like, wow, this is this is wild. Mm -hmm. But the, the the thoughts he gave me were so profound in terms of the the mindset around thinking about death. And and since then, and I'm far from. Uh, perfect, obviously, in this regard either. But I've just been thinking a lot more and holding this coin and thinking about, okay, well, when I'm worrying about something that just feels like it's, or watching news on Facebook that just doesn't serve me or anything that feels like it's not food for my soul mm. and oh, and probably a waste of time. Uh, and again, not to say I don't fall into the tiger tiger, sure. uh, tiger king traps, <laughs> but but just but but largely now I have more of an acute awareness of the preciousness of time. That's right, and how finite it is, and what really matters. And I mm -hmm. think we're all kind of being confronted with that collectively, right? Where it's like, you know, we're, we're amidst this existential seeming threat. You know, mm -hmm. now it's looking. Thankfully, like it's it's still a profound threat, but less like a month and a half ago, some of this, the projections were catastrophic. Like Horrendous, it looked like yeah. uh, it looked like it could be another version of the 1918 flu. But mm. thankfully, knock on wood, it's turned out, you know, and hopefully it'll play out that it's less uh, virulent and deadly than that. But yeah. I think all of us are still faced with this. You know, this is likely something almost everyone will have to confront at some point. Um Obviously, it seems to affect those with underlying conditions more significantly than others. But even young people that I've talked to that have had it or yeah. seen it, I mean, it is not it's not pretty. Uh, and, and that's the, that's the putting it lightly. So I think it's confronting us, forcing us to confront the, 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 the notion of death. It's confronting, forcing us to confront how healthy we are, how, how much we built up our immunity. Mm -hmm. And I think it's 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 sort of calling us also to question things we took for granted and also things that we invested our time in 
that are frankly probably aren't worth our time and energy. Right. You know? Like oh, I don't yeah. know about you, but I've been like, Oof. man, I don't know why I was tripping on that. Like that, I, that took <laughs> oh. me like a week of my time. Like that was that was I could I could I should let that go right away or, or or like you know things like that. You're just like wow, okay. You're it's right. Been yeah. Sitting in on me and Joe's conversations over the last couple of weeks, <laughs> yeah. dude. It's 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 a constant onion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Matt and I in the business, definitely personally with my dad going. That was an immediate thing. I'm sure you've experienced very similar things. Yeah. By the way, I'm getting that coin. I'm, I just made a note. So yeah. I mean, and, and if you think about it, and thank you for sharing that. I think it's awesome. I heard him talking about that Ryan Holiday before. Um, I think it's a collective mourning right now with just like how things were just a couple months ago at the time of this recording. I mean, I don't think we're going back to how things were in in so many ways. I mean, yeah. it's mm-hmm. impossible. I mean, it's the past, but now it's been like rocked. So, you know, collectively, that coin is probably something everyone should probably have in mind yeah. or maybe get. We'll find a link and drop it in the yeah. show notes. <laughs> but I mean, like it's it's a great reminder and that was that was one of the big things. It was like, okay, here are the things I'm proud of, of, you know, how I live my life, but also looking at my dad's life. And these are the things I probably uh, I'm not as proud of and reflect on things in his life as well, because I realized a lot of those traits in a weird way. I'm like, well, not weird because he's my father, but they were in me and I just didn't realize them. There were a lot of uh, blind spots that just immediately popped up. I was like, whoa, how long have I been ignoring that thing? Yeah. And I think this time right now is just a collective perfect time to reflect and identify those blind spots and how you can move forward and grow. I, I think that's beautifully said. I think, you know, it is, we either let this time, you know, there's a saying, and you you and I, we all met in a, in a leadership training, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's a, you know, there's a saying for me, and I don't think it originated in, in that particular training, but perhaps another leadership uh, training that I've done before where they said, you know, ostensibly you're either, you know, at cause or at effect. And it's kind of like another way to put it is like you're either enrolling people in your vision or being enrolled into theirs. Right. But mm-hmm. I think I think the, the, the sense of being at cause is being is knowing what you want, living from a place of vision and being committed to it and then basically going off and creating commensurate with that vision. Hmm. Being at effect to me is always being in the wind uh, to other people's agendas, other people's visions, other people's ideas, thoughts, you know, plans. And the longer we don't, we aren't clear on our own vision, the more we're subject to being at effect to others, right? Because that's just, that's kind of, that's just how how it seems to work. And so, Mm -hmm. So I think right now what's interesting is we're all in a way at effect uh, to something way bigger than ourselves. Hmm. But in that being at effect, we have the opportunity to get so crystal clear on what we want to be at cause with, you know, like it's oh like, God. okay, you know, like we're, we're massively collectively like in this collective pause and at effect to like, okay, well, oh, some things are just bigger than us. Death hmm. is bigger than us. Pandemics are bigger than us. And, and there's actually, like, I think some real beauty in that humility, you know, like, yeah, I mm-hmm. think, especially in an egoic oriented society such as we live in, where sometimes we live by these false prophets of like, oh, happiness comes on the other end of accumulating shit tons of money or, mm-hmm. you know, the perfect 10 uh, girlfriend or wh- whatever it is. And, and pardon my profanity. It's just to say, <laughs> like, for effect, sometimes we 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 seek things outside of ourselves thinking that that's going to bring it to us. Right. And I think in moments like this, where even the person with those things that's sort of made it, right? Like the billionaires of the world, everyone's still stuck in their home. Mm. Granted, their home might be a little bit nicer to be mm. stuck in, but they're they're not out enjoying, you know, their billions uh, right nope. now. Everyone's, nope. everyone's stuck <laughs> basically doing the, you know, doing, if they're smart, doing this, doing the Skype calls, connecting, reaching out. But, but the people that are really are at effect are the ones where you get lost in that wormhole. And that's not making them bad, but like, you know, where Tiger King turns into a Netflix and chill for five days mm. or seven days and nothing but ice cream and chips and, you know, drinking and like, you know, basically losing yourself into the being at effectness of, of life. And I think the opportunity we're all in is a, in this collective pause is to what degree are you going to be at effect and to what degree are you going to step into that which you care about? that which is deep in your vision and step into being a cause for that. Dude. (laughs) (laughs) 
this is a book right here this you, you have a way with one. words like you just you, you like hypnotize us when you talk about this stuff <laughs> it's like, just amazing you keep talking but i guess that's what peak yeah. mine is is there for but you don't probably yeah. do as much well you don't do as much of the talking there but still no i don't actually that, that felt that felt good i don't even know where it yeah. came from <laughs> but yeah, we're I mean, silent yeah at the end of the day there, there there is a gift being being given to people like all of mm -hmm. the stuff that a lot of people have taken for granted for so long is there's a spotlight put on it right now right mm -hmm. it's like you, you you don't you don't appreciate the 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 warmth until you felt the the coldness right and right now we're feeling the coldness so when we come out of this ideally everybody looks back at this situation and remembers what we went through and remembers all the things that things that they took for granted and like let that that stuff stick with them beyond this event that's happening right now and i think the world will actually be a better place if people could sort of remember these times once we come out of these times and i think i think that's uh, a a thing that i've journaled on a lot and something that i want to keep remembering is like as i journal each day i'm writing down the things that i'm grateful for that i've probably taken for granted until there there's a spotlight on them right now and so um you know i think i think that's that's an important thing to take away from what's going mm -hmm. on right now yeah, I agree. I, 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 it's, it's like, what is the, what, what are the takeaways, and can we actually hold them? I think the one challenge mm -hmm. is, not to be pessimistic, because I, I think I, I veer, I'm a pragmatic optimist, but I think, you know, oftentimes these, for lack of a better term, catastrophic or, or highly, uh, you know, these, these events that are massive disruptors, you know, mm -hmm. natural mm -hmm. disasters or other events. You know, and I volunteered, for example, in Haiti after the earthquake. Mm -hmm. um, that are that are just that are absolutely horrific. the uh, The positive is, though, is the way that it causes humanity to rise in our shared humanity. Mm -hmm. You know, in our shared human nature. And I think that's the thing that's actually being shown to us is that the fallacy that we are. And I'm look. I love individual liberty. I love the fact that we get to choose how we want to live our lives. But I think mm -hmm. the fallacy of individual liberty uh, at no cost uh, is is just that. It's a fallacy, right? We've been shown right. that actually we are inherently interdependent and inherently interconnected, and that if mm -hmm. one person on one side of the world gets a disease, it's very feasible that all of us could potentially get that disease, and so. And also, if, if you take a stand and, you know, say in the words of like, you know, in a great like a Martin Luther King or a Mother Teresa or a Gandhi or a Mandela, you know, mm -hmm. if you take actions that can have such profound positive uh, implications. But oftentimes after these events happen, we go back to default mode, right? Mm -hmm. Or like or our default lives. It's like. There is no going back, but oftentimes, I, if I if I had to posit a guess, most people are like I can't wait till we go back to real life or go oh, back yeah. to reality, right? Like, there, yep. yeah. if this is actually the medicine it should be, there is no going back. It's like okay, we come out of this fundamentally different. This is the graduation. This mm -hmm. is the rite of passage into coming out on the other side, you know? And and I think that's the thing is like, do we use this as just another thing that happened that was like unfortunate and messed me up that we're a victim to? Or, uh, and that's not to assuage or like say, you know, people aren't having very real suffering here. I'm not minimizing right. that in any way, but just like, but do, are we a victim to it? Or are we able to, amidst all that challenge, say, okay, here's what I'm committed to on the other side. And I'm going to fundamentally come at life differently. I'm going to let this go. Like you said, like I'm going to let go of those things that I was doing before that really weren't serving me, mm -hmm. you know, and what a better time than now to say, okay, no more, you know, from this yeah. point forward, I am, I'm not bringing this to the other side, you know, like this is, this is getting left behind. Mm -hmm. And then that creates space for a whole new reality. Or do I just say, oh, sweet, things are back to usual, can't, you know, usual to, to whatever that default right. world was. And we all go back. And then unfortunately, if things don't change, both individually and collectively, the next the next reminder uh, from, you know, the, you know, the, the, the great beyond, the, so the to speak, degree, is, yeah. is a bigger <laughs> pandemic, with, which is actually more virulent and more concerning. And I and I think. Not that I would ever call that uh, call that in. It's just to say, like, I think that there's lessons, and if we learn those lessons, um, and we appropriate and we write the ships both individually and collectively, we can mitigate against some of the future risk. If hmm. we just use it as an opportunity to turn tune out and then go back to default aspects of life that weren't serving 
anyone in the first place, and we do that collectively, there's eight billion of us. It's mm. not gonna. It's not gonna turn out well. It's not gonna no. bode well mm. for our, our collective future. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think one thing that I really hope a lot of people get out of this whole thing too is remember during this time which workers you considered essential to because i yeah. you know mm. it, it's such a fascinating thing to see like what we consider essential right now the essentials right now are the people that are making our food the people that are doing the deliveries um you know the, the doctors the 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 law enforcement the, the 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 firefighters that are still working out on the the front lines helping the people that are going through all this stuff you know but you know more more um specifically like the people that are delivering our food and the people that are running the, the like still going into the work every day and cooking food and delivering and you know delivering it and stuff yep i don't really th those people don't really have like a high sort of status in our culture and i think right now everybody is seeing like holy crap like how 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 can we live without these people teachers too like look at all the all the kids that are at home and all the parents going nuts going my god like th these teachers are not paid enough Right, and I'm I'm hoping when we come out of this, everybody feels that sense of community. It's still there, and people go, okay, these people need to make more, right? And then you look at like the the highest paid people on earth. You got your, you know, your your athletes, your movie stars, your actors, stuff like that. How essential were they really? And did you know the 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 money that they were all getting? Like, could some of that go towards other places that we right now are seeing as essential? And I just I think it's fascinating to look at that and look at how our culture has decided, you know this deserves this amount of money, but this doesn't quite deserve as much. But then when shit hits the fan, who do we need? Right. Mm. So I, I just think it's fascinating to look at it. And I hope that people remember that aspect of it because like, I know the teachers that taught my kids aren't making enough. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's true. No, you're, you're, you, you hit it on the head. I think, you know, this notion of what is essential, I think that's a very beautiful point, right? Like we often in society, I mean, the disproportionate resources and even unfortunately in this COVID time, right? Like the billionaires in our in our in our world have gotten richer during this mm, period oh, of time, yeah. like by orders of magnitude. And if we haven't learned historically, most civilizations fall when the disparity between the haves and the have nots become too great. And that's definitely happening. And uh, and I think the piece you mentioned, I mean, I was reflecting on that very same thing. And I walked out this morning and I saw some gentlemen getting together for work uh, and they were working on repairing a house. And I was just thinking, man, so grateful, like all the people, for example, that are growing the food. I was thinking about that mm -hmm. today as I was, you know, as I was eating my kale and my, you know, not to be a California stereotype, but <laughs> my kale and my, and my garlic <laughs> and my onions and like all those things. And talking to a friend before, like I was saying, who's in Nepal, and they don't, and there's yep. huge food scarcity, and like just mm -hmm. the, the the idea that like, which goes into not to get so, so political, but like you know immigration as well, and like you know some mm. of the people that don't have even the basic rights of citizenship. I mean, at least now some people who are really and not, not woefully enough, you know. I mean, I know a lot of single moms who are waitresses. I've heard in other states, like on NPR, that are getting like eighty dollars a week. But then oh there's God. certain people wow. that are like, you know, who are like in the fields that are undocumented that are getting nothing. But yet mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to survive if they weren't doing the work that they're doing in the fields or others, as you said, who are who are making the deliveries or the folks that are obviously the nurses and the firefighters, mm -hmm. all these people right. that are absolute heroes. And I think it is shining a light on their 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 profound value. And I think it mm -hmm. is interesting that societally we exalt things across the board i think both in terms of professions uh but also like the things that we're chasing after the great carrots in our society you know like um you know there, there's that famous sort of quote which is like i'd i'd love to see a billionaire be defined as someone who's impacted the lives of a billion people rather than mm. someone who's amassed a billion dollars right like mm -hmm. you know mm. and i and i've seen in, in confronting this mortality question, you know, you don't take any, we all know this intellectually, but I, as I sat at my father's desk and looked around, I was like all these material possessions, you know, none of that went with him, you know, mm, not, none right. of that, none of that's, none of that's going, you know, that's, that didn't go along the journey. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say, you know, you know, we don't have things we all love that are, that are sentimental and, and meaningful and all of that. But, you know, why, if you're a multiple billionaire, do you need to keep accumulating billions is it what for you know like mm -hmm. and and to your point like 
at what cost is the gross accumulation of resources after a certain point, right? Like, and, and right. What, what cost is it to all, all of our collective future if if those essential workers aren't looked after such that we can keep life as we know it going? Because as we've seen now, it is f more fragile than we think, you know, mm -hmm. and and. Mm -hmm. And you, if you could have all the money in the world, but the bank won't open, or you can't get food to your door, or you can't get delivery, uh, you know, like those are just zeros, and they're right. and and you've spent your life accumulating something you can't even really use. So I think it's it's and it, you know another friend of our, our mutual friend Lewis said, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you. you Give a billion, t take a billionaire, the biggest billionaire in the world, and if all of a sudden they found out they had a terminal illness, how fast mm. would they give that billions up for another year of living or another two mm -hmm. years of living? That's and right. I think that's oftentimes the thing that we take for granted is, uh, you know, and as the Buddha said, you know, of all wealth, health is greatest and best. And I think we're being collectively reminded of that right now. Uh, there's no greater wealth than the health we have. And frankly, no greater wealth than what we already take for granted. You know, the That's sun shines. Right, we have clean water to drink if we're fortunate enough to be listening in a place where we don't fresh have poison. Air. Yeah. Fresh air. Oh. We have roofs over our heads if we're fortunate enough. I'm presuming most people are listening, at least have the, the mechanisms to, to by which to listen to a radio. I mean, mm -hmm. basically, we are wealthy beyond measure. And um, and I think that's the other piece, right? Is like the the medicine that comes in being grateful for that which we do have. And I think that's the mm -hmm. other piece oh. is like, man, I'm so grateful for the essential workers, and I'm so grateful for the things that I've often taken for granted. You know, oh. like just yeah. being able to like go outside and breathe air after being inside for so long. You know, and like, just go outside. <laughs> period. Sunshine. Exactly. Yeah. Just go outside. <laughs> like yeah. you hear a bird uh. call, you're like, wow, that that sounds good. <laughs> what was you that? Know? Like, what? <laughs> Man, that, that that's the best thing I've heard all day. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah. It, yeah, it's uh, it's a great reckoning. It is. Yeah. It's a perspective change, and I hope that uh, I'm sure if people have listened to us this long, uh, you know, hung along with us, they're they're feeling that change and they're agreeing. So, um, yeah. I think this would be a good place to wrap it up, man. I mean, this is this has been a great journey just in this conversation. And like, likewise, said, I'm almost like hypnotic listening to him. Like, it is, yeah, <laughs> this is the way. Um, so let's uh, let's remind folks. Uh, so, Peak Mind is your podcast. How can folks go find that? Yeah, so it's Peak Mind with Michael Trainer on all podcast platforms. You know, Apple, iHeartRadio, Spotify, all the things. Uh, I'm just at Michael Trainer on uh, all the social platforms. Uh, feel free to reach out. I love I love responding to everyone and and yep. uh, yeah, Michael Trainer. Uh, you know, if you just you can Google me or peakmind.org is my website. So those are the cool. main ways to get in contact. Always love building the community. So grateful for you guys for what you've built in terms of your community here and these and these great listeners. It's Thank always you. always an honor to come on, and I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Grateful for you guys. We'll do it again when the book's out. And I know you have your virtual event uh, coming out sometime. I don't know if it's how it lines up with the episode release of this thing, but we'll point to it nonetheless. Great. Love it. And yeah, man. So I appreciate you. And uh, Matt, anything else? No, I mean, we, we covered a lot of ground. I, I, I love this conversation. Thanks so All much. Alrighty. Likewise. We'll Thanks, Jess. Thank you, man. Bye, guys. Do you want to learn the hard skills necessary to support your favorite shows? Well, cool. Our friends Gina, Haley, and Mel created something called Podcast Production School. Now, it's an online course designed to help you master the skills and strategies needed to launch, manage, and grow podcasts, including things like audio editing, show notes, creation, and promotions. So download their free podcast production or their launch checklist today at podcastproductionschool.com slash go slash flowchart. Again, that's podcastproductionschool.com slash go slash flowchart. Thanks so much for tuning into that episode. I hope you dug it. I know Joe and I dug it. I actually kicked Joe out of the room. He's not here right now because I wanted to tell you about a tool that I really, really dig. We use it in our business. We recommend it all the time. It's called Easy Webinar, and it's a tool that lets you do live webinars, automated webinars, hybrid webinars, and uh, you know pretty much any other kind of webinar if 
there are other kinds of webinars. But anyway, this tool is kind of like your all-in-one do-it-all tool for anything webinar related. It's Easy Webinar. It's put out by a dude named Casey Zeman. He's been on the podcast. If you haven't listened to that episode, it's a killer episode. He's a really smart dude, but his software is amazing. It does everything. It's, you know, the title tells you exactly what it does. It's an easy webinar platform. And we use this in our business to run automated webinars all the time. We don't do a lot of live webinars these days. We like to do the kind of automated webinars where somebody can register and then it, you know, they can either watch it like 15 minutes later or they can watch it the next day, but it's just kind of always running. And it's a system that helps us make autopilot sales off of our webinars. Super cool tool. If you haven't tried it yet, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing tool. And, uh, Casey is actually hooking you up. He said for listeners of Hustle and Flowchart, I can't believe he's doing this, but he said for, for listeners of the Hustle and Flowchart podcast, he's giving 25% off of the membership to use Easy Webinar. It's already super, super inexpensive for what it does and all the cool features it has, but he's hooking you up with 25% off because you're a listener of Hustle and Flowchart. Go to easywebinar.com slash hustle. That's where you can get that 25% off discount. That's easywebinar.com slash hustle. It's an awesome tool. You're going to dig it. So just go grab it. Check it out. Easywebinar.com slash hustle. See ya. No, not see ya. You'll hear me in the next show. I don't know. I don't know how to close these things. Go get Easy Webinar. Talk to you later. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of the Hustle and Flowchart podcast. For taking the time to listen, we want to give you something a little bit special. Every single episode that we do, we actually have somebody on our team take notes. We basically have a Cliff's Notes version of every episode where you can go and find all of the tips and tactics that they laid out, all of the resources that they laid out all the good stuff from this episode we actually have a nice simple notes version that you can find on our website so go to evergreenprofits.com find this episode that you just listened to and uh, give us your email address and we'll send you the notes thanks for listening